this is a fair warning that this is going to be a little bit more vulnerable and tear filled prayer time um just enjoyed a beautiful service to my friend sally and i i had to leave a little early because i have to pick up isaac from school but um you know oh gosh so much i could say i believe her instagram is public so um it's my six arrows um, look her up on Instagram, you know, Araceli Palacios. Um, and please, please continue to pray for the Palacios family. But just right now at the end, at the tail end of the service, her celebration of life service, the pastor, you know, was talking about Job. And, you know, she, Sally just turned 46. And so we just, we are not honest if we don't say why. Why, God, why did she have to pass so young, you know, leaving her husband and her children? But one of the things that was shared in the service that was so beautiful was that she was ready. She was ready to meet Jesus. And, you know, all of us are sinners and we fail. We, you know, sometimes we fail miserably. But we, we want to keep quick, short accounts with the Lord, you know, asking God for forgiveness quickly. But she was ready to meet Jesus. And on the one hand, I kept thinking over and over, you know, that how awful it was that she had to be in the hospital without her family around her in these last few weeks before she went home to be with the Lord. But I stand corrected. Yes, it was awful. But God used that time to prepare her family that she may not walk out of that hospital. Instead, she might walk into her heavenly home to be with Jesus. And so, yes, we groan. And yes, we weep. And yes, we grieve. But we don't walk around hopeless and despondent like the world does. We sorrow with hope. We do both, you guys. We weep, we grieve, we mourn, but we also rejoice. You know, there was a part when Sergio, her husband, was speaking and sharing that I just couldn't help but smile because he was just so full of joy. He's like, she's there. She's in her new body. She's beholding Jesus. He was just beaming like my bride is now with her savior our savior and it was just a beautiful moment you know i often think man it takes such bravery for a spouse or for a child to speak at a at a service and give a eulogy because your grief and your emotions are so raw but anyway so i just wanted to thank you all for praying for the palacios family please continue to pray for the palacios family and our sorrow it will be turned to joy our mourning will be turned to dancing our aches and pains are going to be redeemed into a beautiful glorified body do we really believe this do we really believe what the bible says that to be absent from the body is to be present from the lord i'm driving but i'm gonna you know real quickly raise my hand i do i believe it i believe it and i know it because god's word is truth and his holy spirit opens our eyes to the truth of the gospel it's not just a story the other day i was talking to the lord and i said i thank you god it's not just a fairy tale you know i love to watch documentaries about israel because that's my jesus's home when he was on earth that's where he lived that's where he walked by the mediterranean sea you know everything is coming to pass as he said and to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And so we groan and we grieve. But our sorrow will turn to joy. And I was just thinking, my friend, Magali. Hi, Magali, if you're praying with me right now. She said, you know, why does Jesus want to save our tears in a bottle? There's all these different theories of why the scripture records that the Lord saves our tears. You know, and I heard one pastor say that it's because in the ancient times, uh, women would literally 
save their tears. They were little bottles and they would, they would put their tears in the bottle and they would save them. Um, but I believe, well, what my friend Magali shared and it blew my mind and I believe it's true. She said, maybe Jesus saves our tears because in heaven there's going to be rainbows. You need water to make a rainbow. You know, which is why Hawaii is so beautiful because, you know, like in Mammoth, there's this place called Rainbow Falls because the water is fall is crashing down in a waterfall and then there's like a mist and as the mist comes up, you can see a rainbow. You need mist to see a rainbow and so maybe my friend Magali shared this and I thought it sounds right to me I don't know we won't know till we get to heaven but maybe the reason the Lord saves our tears is because you know his throne is going to be glorious and there's going to be rainbows and there's going to be streets of gold and uh gates of pearls and um you know it's going to be just so beautiful a sea of glass and rainbows of living color like that song we sing the revelation song and so maybe our tears are saved because there's going to be the laura rainbow and the sandy rainbow and the you know uh becky rainbow and the chuck rainbow and we're all going to have a rainbow made out of our tears and and he will redeem all of our pain and he doesn't waste pain so heaven is sweeter now that my friend sally is home and we're gonna make it there we're gonna we're gonna be there and i love when people say it's not goodbye it's see you soon and it's so true because we're going to be in the presence of the lord too soon sooner than later because we know the rapture is about to happen so to be encouraged you know, I'm crying and, and mourning, thinking of my friend Sally, but you may be crying with me, thinking of something else, thinking of a prodigal, thinking of a death of a marriage, thinking of someone that died recently, or maybe you're crying because I'm crying. You know, us women, we do that. If you see someone cry, you start crying because God made us compassionate and I love it. Shortest verse of the Bible, Jesus wept. And I'm so thankful that he wept because he knows what it's like to feel that real pain. And Father in heaven, I thank you. I thank you that Sally's life continues to live on through her husband, through her children, through her prayers, and through her life well lived. Well done, good and faithful servant. I know that she heard those words. And the pastor said in the service today that she had the biggest smile and she's smiling even bigger now because she's in your presence. And so, Lord, I pray that we would take that baton of faith, the baton of prayer, and we would say, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. We are weak, but he is strong. And Lord, we are so weak. We are so, so weak and weary, Lord. This world is pain-filled. This world is destructive. This world is grieving, and the earth is grieving and mourning. And we just can't wait till that day when we will be with you, Jesus, in our heavenly home. And there's going to be mansions. And we are just so thankful for that day we will be with you forever and ever. And there's something going on right here. These things I've spoken to you. In this world you have trouble. But be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. There's a scripture right there. And I believe it's because there's going to be um, somebody's... Uh, a military man that passed away um, going here on the 10 freeway. I don't know, but I just praise you, God, for that moment because I saw a scripture hanging right here off of the 60 freeway in John's gospel um, of peace. And we need your peace, Lord. And I'm so thankful that you will give us perfect peace when our mind is fixed on you. And I read that this morning in my Bible. I thank you for your peace. I thank you for your joy. I thank you for hope. I thank you for life, Lord. To think that Sally, she she gave birth to babies. She adopted babies. She served in children's ministry. She served babies. God, we get to serve. We get to sing. We get to dance. We get to come alongside people and mentor people and be mentored and be discipled, Jesus. And just life, life is, is beautiful. And I'm so thankful. And yet it's painful too. So Lord, help us to live every day that we are alive for you. Lord, make our lives an offering, a sweet smelling aroma, an incense unto you, Jesus. We pray for the prodigals. Bring them back home, Lord. Even as I was sitting in that sanctuary of Calvary Chapel, 
um, Golden Springs and I was thinking, I bet there's prodigals in here. I bet there's people in here that don't know you. And, and I just pray that you would use Sally's life to draw people back to a saving knowledge of you, Lord. This is not fire insurance. It's not just, I say yes to Jesus and I get a ticket out of hell. Lord, you want to give us abundant life. And I'm just so thankful, Lord. And Father, I just praise you in the storm. I praise you for your goodness. I praise you for the community of believers and the saints, Lord, that we get to do life together. We get to pray together and pray for each other, Lord. And I just, I want to take a moment to pray for California right now because I know that many people are sad that our governor is still in office and we believe that he is wicked, that he uh, rules uh, from a position of power instead of a position of compassion. He rules from a position of of, um, of just a false, false ideology, God. And so I just pray for Governor Newsom's salvation. I pray for California. I know many people want to leave. Would you allow us to wait until you tell us to leave, that we will not move, we will not um, move out of this state or county or location unless you tell us, unless you make it crystal clear, Jesus, that you want us to move. May we be so spirit sensitive in these last days, just like Moses and the children of Israel. When the cloud moved, they moved. When the pillar of fire stayed, they stayed. We want to be obedient. We want to be under your covenant co covering God, that you, you, Holy Spirit, would govern our lives, our actions, our words, even our prayers, Father, that we would pray how you want us to pray. I don't want to pray Laura's agenda. I don't want to pray Laura's will. Father, if it was up to me, my son Isaac would not have autism. I would not be driving right now to pick him up from school, from this autism school. He would be totally healed and whole. But you've allowed him to have autism. And you've used his autism for reasons and for purposes, God, that I will never fully understand until I get to heaven. And so yet I trust you. I trust you. I trust you. And I have many friends that didn't want to get divorced, that wanted to see their husbands saved, that wanted to see their husbands repent, and they didn't. Their husbands walked away from you and they slammed the door in your face, God. Why? I don't know. I don't get it, but I know that there's a choice. And so though you slay me, Jesus, yet yeah, I will praise you. Though you slay us, God, we will praise you. And Lord, your yoke is easy and your burden is light. You've taken care of us through every single battle, through shutdowns, through COVID, through a pandemic, through, you know, when Isaac was biting me and pulling my hair and through very hard times, through the seizures when I thought that I wasn't going to be able to make it, Lord. Seeing my son with tubes all over his body and an MRI scan that showed a giant cyst on his brain. And I didn't think I would make it and you got me through that there's no storm too heavy that you won't carry us through and that's what you did for Sally you carried her from a hospital Covita to heaven she is not dead she's alive in your presence and when we go through trials and they are heavy you bring us through you bring us through and to even see Isaac on the iPad draw a happy face because he was happy it just blessed my heart because he's expressing himself and to see Rebecca today with her hands lifted high worshiping you God knowing that her mama is in heaven yet she puts her hands up and she worships you so God give us kingdom eyes Help us to see like you see, God, that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord in this world. It's losing its luster for a lot of Christians, and for that, I'm thankful. I'm thankful for Christians that are not sitting on their hands anymore, but they're getting in the battle, and they're praying, and they're fasting, and they're waiting on you. And they're leading other people to you, God. I'm so thankful for that, God. You've sounded an alarm and a huge wake-up call. And many, many are repenting and coming back to you. And I'm just so thankful, God. Thankful for this time, Lord. 2021. I thought for sure the rapture would happen before the election last year. And nope, we got a new president. And a lot of bad things keep happening. Jesus, Afghanistan. And 
I pray for those in, in, in Iraq and, and Afghanistan. I pray for mercy. I pray you would protect those little girls and those women and those grandmas and even little boys and innocent people and Christians that are there. I pray for the Christians here. Lord, we don't have to go underground. Not yet. We're able to praise you. We're able to worship you. We're able to bless your name in public still. So may we do it. May we repent, God, please, Jesus, turn around this nation, turn around homes, turn around marriages, turn the prodigals back on their feet. May they do like the army, a 180, an about face. Turn them around, Jesus, please. We pray for revival in our nation, God, for revival in homes, for revival in schools, God, for revival in hearts, Lord. Please, God, may these aches and pains of this world and all these deaths and this COVID nightmares, may it not be wasted, but may you use it all, God. Use it all, every tear. Use all of these things, God. I know that my Redeemer lives, and when we go to heaven, there's no death or disability or disease or decay or divorce or... or um Asperger's or aches and pains or arthritis or Parkinson's or dementia or or any of these things Lord it will be all gone Lord and I just thank you for the heavenly reunion that we will be in your presence forevermore your word says in your presence is fullness of joy at your right hand are pleasures forevermore teach us to pray in the spirit God teach us to war in the spirit God forgive me of all my sins Lord of my flesh spending too much time on social media spending too much time I'm on TV. Lord, I want to be with my face buried in the scriptures, Lord. Just just feasting on it. Even if I'm just listening to Bible in my car, listening to podcasts, listening to your word being taught. Help me, God, to pass the baton to Olivia and Isaac. Help us all to pass the baton to our children, to our grandchildren, to our uh, Bible study groups, to our friends, family, to strangers, God. Help us to live a full life, Lord. You spoke to the Samaritan woman, God. Use us, Jesus, to speak to those women that seem like they would never want you, Jesus, to be bold, God. I love what Sergio said today. He said, me? Yeah, right. I'm from East LA. I'm a I'm a thug. I'm not supposed to make it to my 20s or my 30s, and yet you've, you've blessed Sergio with a beautiful wife and six beautiful children and so many brothers and sisters in Christ God you are the God of the impossible Lord and I just thank you for that I pray for revival please God save now use Olivia use Ontario Christian School may you help these young kids to not be so cushy to not be so comfortable in their life with their sports and their athletics and their um, academics and their homecoming dances and all those things are good and wonderful, but that's not the ultimate thing. Jesus, you're the ultimate thing. Wake us up. Wake up the church, Lord, because I don't know how much longer we're going to have. I know you're coming soon, Jesus. Come quickly. Come quickly, Lord. We pray for repentance in Sacramento, in uh, the White House, God, I pray against abortion, against sex um, trafficking, human trafficking, against abuse in homes, domestic violence and sexual abuse and tormenting and, and verbal abuse and so many evil, wicked things that I as a lawyer hear and they grieve me, Lord. But Jesus, you know and you see it because you're Al Roy, the God who sees you see it all. So I pray for repentance and revival and may you begin in the house of God. I love you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I thank you for the gift of my friend Sally. I thank you for all my friends and family praying in agreement, locking arms for the Palacios family. I thank you for pray with me. I thank you for YouTube that we could pray together, Lord. I pray against cancer, all those battling cancer and ugly diseases and, and grieving and mourning. Lord, we're all mourning something we're all mourning together but we know jesus that this is not our home that one day we're going to be in your presence lord so help us to live our life to the fullest to make that phone call to make that meal to send that text message to call up that friend that loved one that we would be about your business jesus until you call us home lord we want to do your kingdom assignments lord while we're here on earth we love you in jesus name amen God bless you guys.